welcome to Wednesday service once again. Listen, I, I, I can't contain myself because we're about to do part two of what Pam, our guest from last week, has in her spirit. I, I can't wait to get into the session because I believe she is going to release and unleash a well of revelation that we're going to be blessed with. So without any further ado, get your pen, your paper, your pencil, whatever you need so that we can learn from this amazing woman of God and what she has to share for us to be able to execute the spiritual things of the kingdom. Welcome to Wednesday service. You're going to be blessed. Let's get into the classroom. So, 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 so you know what? It's interesting, right? Because I think what you shared with me goes back to Isaiah. He said, I will not remember. So remember is that mental replay. Mm -hmm. Thoughts. I will not remember your sins mm -hmm. for my own sake. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then he goes to Micah 7 and says, I cast into the sea, I remove it from God. So, so what you're saying is, <clears throat> when the offend act happens, we have a decision. Take it. <laughs> yeah, I got the fish on the hook now. Take it. There it is. Fish is on the hook. So now you take it, uh -huh. and then it starts replaying. Yeah, and it, mentally, it's wiggling it around there. You, mm -hmm. And then the devil takes hold of that thought. And once you are thinking that way, the Bible says, be reduced by the transformation of your mind. So once you're thinking that way, you become that offense. You become offensive. You become yeah, offensive. Absolutely. You, become, you literally become that offense. Mm -hmm. And what we don't realize in that moment, too, is not only is that offense on the hook, the person that offended us, we're on the hook in front of it. You know what, Pam? I tell you, what you're saying is incredible because I was listening to this man of God, Prophet Sakodia, and he said something. He said, it begins with a little fault. Then it becomes offense. Then it becomes anger. And when it's full blown, it becomes bitterness. Mm -hmm. So it's just basically higher degrees of meditating mm -hmm. on that little thing that happened. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you know, you're a different human being. And all you did was you did the mistake which you just talked about, which is you took the offense. Yeah, and you didn't what have we to take it. what we feed grows. I mean, it's a principle in the universe. What we feed grows. And I didn't have to take the offense. I can literally have the power to say, no, no, I am not taking that offense. Mm -hmm. And then also on the, uh, additionally, like, you know, sometimes, okay, so you've talked recently about um, the, the, the credit card of debts that we've accumulated towards other people, over right? Time, right. Uh, what came to my mind as I've listened to that is, you know, um, as a financial person too, um, you know, when our, when we, over exceed our credit limits to get out of trouble the best thing that we can do is like tear up the credit card throw it away and start paying down the debts so there's there's you know there are a lot of christians there are a lot of bitter christians or hurting christians and not just you know carrying around the trauma that's not been processed that they haven't talked to other people about that they haven't confess to God, you know, because where else can we take these things except to the spirit, to the cross, because that suffering is there. That's where his lives and ours intersect. Is it every place that we've suffered, every place that we've, we've fill in the blank. You know, Pam, I was talking about David. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Here is a man, 2 Samuel, who his own son kills mm -hmm. Amnon, his other half-brother. Kills him. And then Absalom is raging. Mm -hmm. Raging. So it's interesting because in that story, <coughs> uh, obviously Amnon did something wrong in sleeping with Tamar. And, and Absalom took offense. But he took it. <laughs> he took it. And then the Bible said for two years, he just kept meditating on it. And then he got mad as that. Mm -hmm. Right? 
and then he turned the whole all the men of Israel their hearts against David. Mm -hmm. So now it's not just an incident; it has become a universal Israeli issue. And the next thing you know, David, as anointed as David is and as he is king, the guy is running away from his very throne. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he goes into the wilderness, and now Absalom. You know the story. Ten concubines. Yeah. Can you imagine? I mean, biological, right? If you are doing your thing. I mean, I don't know what kind of medication they had in those days to be able to pull that off. But ten separate people. I mean, the rage that you even have to have to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's death. That's how we get to that place where you even feel like you just, you just blow up. Mm -hmm. Like how you're saying the credit cards get maxed out to the point where you have to file for bankruptcy. It's yeah, like, it's like just gotta, just I got it's, it's just got to stop. Jeez, Pam, how do we exercise the strength to not get the bait of taking the offense? How do we how do we do that? This is interesting, and and, and you have to help me with this where where Christ breathed upon them. The spirit br was breathed upon them. Okay, like in the what's the New Testament? Um, I'm Jesus forgetting specific, specifically, okay. but 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 it brings to mind the breath of God. The breath of the God. breath of God. The breath of God. And it takes me back to the the Venn diagram, mm -hmm. wisdom in the middle. Mm -hmm. When these parts of the brain aren't working, mm -hmm. we have to breathe. We have to breathe. We have to breathe. Literally, you're saying. I'm breathe. saying literal, literally breathe. <sighs> That is what balances our physiology as human beings when we're heightened emotionally or in survival mode to bring, because we're usually holding our breath or hyperventilating. So, so, so the breath of the Almighty, we talk about the breath of the That's Almighty. where I was going to go next, because what we do when we think about wise mind, we breathe in the spirit. Okay, you know what? We you breathe know, out. You know what, Pam, ah, you are, you are breathe me, out the praise. Breathe making, out the truth. Yeah, you are making me realize that even that thing where when kids are super, we say, okay, take a breather. That is even scriptural. Yeah, take a breath. I, I never, because he is the breath, the breath of the Almighty. Yes, right? absolutely. So if you read Ezekiel, right? Mm -hmm. Ezekiel, the valley of the dry bones. And the prophet said, is it possible for these things to live again? Right? Mm -hmm. And then he said, Son of man, prophesy. And Ezekiel begins to prophesy to the rabbis, and then they, what? The breath came. And all those dead things began to have life. Mm -hmm. So I think what you're trying to say is literally, when we say the breath, the breath of the Almighty, and the Spirit breathed, right? It's a pause. It's Absolutely. life, the breath. We come to the present moment. We come into his presence. So it's going, it's going, it's going. You're kidding, you're ventilating, you're ventilating, you're, you're venting, you're venting, you're venting. Breath of God. Mm -hmm. It's life. It's where you find the power. Father to child, spirit to spirit, spirit. lighted by your, your word. word. Just breathe your name upon this me. This is breathe. how I change my world. <laughs> There's a famous song. His name is Dancing. Breathe, yeah, yeah. Breathe, Lord. Just bring your name your upon name me. Upon me. Breathe. You know what? You're right. We have to take a breath from bitterness and anger. Okay, you have to say it again. You have to tell them again. Just, just breathe. Just breathe. Breathe in the Holy Spirit. Breathe out the anxiety. Whatever it is, breathe out. Come into his presence. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. And that breathing is the stillness. Be still and know that. I am God. Listen. Be still and know. And know that I am God. Be still and no, mm -hmm. no. Be still, man. Be wow. Be be just just be still. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. okay, 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 okay. I offer that as a meditation practice to to, to say that scripture to yourself also. 
Okay, this and is, take this one is, this is, word oh, away uh, each okay, okay, time, okay, okay, and okay, by okay, the okay. end of it, I okay. that anger will be gone. Okay, 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 okay. The love will be there. Think about. Uh, tell me. Tell, think about what you think about. Think about what you think about. Yes. Two. Why do you take the offense when you cannot take it? Don't take the offense. Don't take the offense. We take it. I take it. Mm-hmm. I took it. I've taken offenses. Three, be still and know. But we're never still to know. Be still. Breathe. <sighs> and know. Amen. 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 If you're not still, you won't know. If you're not still, you can't hear the truth about yourself, about the situation. Because you're worked up. Mm -hmm. If we're not still, we can't be present. And to be present is to be in his presence. You know, Phil, uh, Phil, that's your husband. Mm -hmm. Pam, you know what? He's the Prince of Peace. Prince Mm -hmm. of Peace. Mm -hmm. When the world was raging against him, from John chapter 13, by the way, Mm -hmm. and he knew my world is chaotic. Mm -hmm. He even prayed in agony in that garden of Gethsemane in John, you get into 13, 14, Mm -hmm. where he was saying, if possible, let it keep my best But But you said something that is amazing. Mm -hmm. When Judas Iscariot showed up with their entourage, he was still. Mm-hmm. And he knew that he was gone. He didn't fight. He was still and knew he was gone. Us, the offense. And you know what? Peter took offense. Mm-hmm. Peter said, what? And, 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 and immediately started reacting with that knife. And Jesus Christ put the ear back. Peter put it away. Mm-hmm. Be still and know. Be still and know. And we're never still. And he did that in and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Fully divine and fully human. That's how we know how to do it. So at that point, he was tapping into his divinity. Which we have access to that. Same we are. He's given thing. this. Mm-hmm. He said, in yeah. power, all power in heaven and earth are given unto you. I have given you the power. Mm-hmm. I have given you the Holy Spirit will bring power. Yeah. Back he will quicken your mortal body. Absolutely. Back to appropriating what the scripture says we have received. And that is when we're walking in the Spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, Pam, you make it sound so simple. Mm. No, 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 no. It is simple. Hearing it sounds so simple. I've realized that Apostle Paul was filled with rage. I mean, we all know the story in the book of Acts. When you get to Acts chapter 8, that area, right? He was filled with rage and he was going to kill the Christians. (laughs) Mm -hmm. What did God do? Made him blind. The guy had no option but to be still. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't see. I can't see. So it's almost like God shut off the visuals that was so enraged in him. He couldn't see the Christians anymore to be so enraged. Mm. And then they shoved them in the room. Well, what are you going to do when you're in a room and you can't see? You're blind. Mm-hmm. You definitely are still. Mm-hmm. And he knew. He knew God. And all that anger dissipated. And Paul became who he is. But because we can't be still, you have you have really opened my eyes today. I need help. You know, I do too. Pam, Pam, <laughs> Pam. We we listen, the word of God doesn't lie. I have I have read this thing, see it play out, and I am convinced more than ever that the word of God is truth. Mm -hmm. 
You know, all the people in your profession, uh, mm. uh, what do they call them? Psych, psych, psy, uh, psychotherapists. Psycho, all these mm-hmm. people, they shrinks, you go on the couch or whatever you call mm-hmm. this, that, that whole industry. Literally, when you go to see a shrink, mm-hmm. he puts you on the couch and says, be still. <laughs> and mm-hmm. no, we just have to know he's God. Yes, and, and a predominant amount of my time is teaching people how to breathe and how to think about what they think about and, and challenging those do. thoughts with the truth. When I walk into the place, they usually have some song going, water or something going. There's a couch. Mm-hmm. They'll put you on the couch. Breathe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then there's a stillness. And then they talk you through your thinking process. And it's so refreshing. And I make a choice in that environment to do what God does, what Jesus did, and that is to sit in your presence providing unconditional positive regard. As the professional. Agape love. And that's all Jesus is trying to do in our life. Come. You just gave me a message. I just gave <laughs> I just got holy ghost goosebumps. <laughs> you just gave me a message to help a lot of people. One, think about what you're thinking about. Two, um, don't take the offense. Three, stop and breathe. Oh my God. Life changing. Pam. We could chew on this for the rest of the two hours, mm-hmm. I'm sure. Three hours, go for it all year. Pam, listen, I've been born again for a long time, and I tell you that love is what makes the story complete. Mm-hmm. If we don't have love, and love is becoming something that is very, very, very hard to find in the body of Christ. I, I mean it. The offense, the selfishness, and the way our mind doesn't even shut down because of technology doesn't make us breathe. We're bombarded. Mm-hmm. And the Bible talks about the transequity, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I wonder how much of us really experience that peace of God because our mind is always racing. And a lot of times the racing that is going on in our mind is our definition of good and evil. Mm-hmm. It's not even decision aligned with the tree. Mm-hmm. Right? So you said something that I've thought about. Meditate upon the word of God. So think the right thinking. Mm -hmm. We have to. But you can sit there and think about your offense until it boils you to death. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you could have thought on the right thing, which is the word of God. Love. Forgiveness, which will Mm -hmm. grab the captivity and get you away from that cycle. Yeah, because when you're on the hook with the person that you feel offended towards, you're in front of the hook and you can't let them <laughs> off until you let yourself off. Jesus. Okay, listen, you said Mark 12 and I we, we, we just went off this amazing revelation. Mm-hmm. Should I read Mark 12 or what do you want me to do? I have it here if you'd like me to read it, I can do that. Okay, well, I can read it and you can elaborate, but however you okay. want to go, which one is better? Are we doing NIV? Um, I think that's what this is, but okay. we'll go right, with the so spirit. So where are we going? Mark 12? 28 through 34. All right. Let me get there. Ready? Mm-hmm. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debate him, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked them, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord with, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no greater commandment than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Mm -hmm. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far (laughs) from the kingdom of God. And from then on. Nobody asked him any more questions. Case closed.
Case closed. If you can love, you're not far from the kingdom. But if you can't love, you are light years. And love is a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. I'll let you speak more. Guys, I'm going to shut up and I'm going to let Pam elaborate on what we've read about love as a choice and how you can choose to be closer to the kingdom or not. Please go ahead. Well, I, I want to talk a little bit about foundations of self-love. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the first is mental health. Okay. And, and, and understanding that all of us have mental health and that mental health and mental illness are two different things. Okay, go ahead. Please explain. Um, you know, mental health is, um, you know, more complicated. You know, your brain can feel heavy under the weight of mental illness, you know, and, and coping skills and therapy can help learn sure. that sure. so that you're not having anxious, depressive thoughts. All the time. Yeah, mental okay. health is thinking about what we think about. And, you know, um, the verse that comes to mind when I think about that is Psalms 43.5. Psalm 43, 5. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. I'll get there for you. And it says, um, you know, why art thou so cast down, my soul? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Why are you disquieted within me? Psalm 43, right? Yeah. yeah. Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Mm -hmm. Which we do. Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Bam. What a verse. God is even a psych, what is, psych, what is he, a shrink? A psych, psychiatric, psychiatrist, whatever they call these people? Mm -hmm. Jesus. That's, now, this is what you call mental what? This is in the, the, within the foundations of self-love. We have to attend to our mental mental health. So this is mental health here. This is mental health. Mm -hmm. mental what is the state of my mental health? Am I just dealing with everyday stresses and, and overwhelm and, and, and those kind of things? We can take that to prayer. Or do we need some professional help? Sure. Do we need to learn coping skills? Do we need to learn how to breathe? Do we need some kind of medical intervention? Yeah. You know, so there's that part. Um, yeah. The next foundation is self-acceptance. Okay. And that takes me to Romans 8.1, if okay. you'd like to look that up. I think there's we just... There's now no condemnation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. For those yeah. who are in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I get that. Who walk after the flesh, not after the flesh, but after the, the spirit. Yeah. So this is this is self acceptance. Yeah, we There's have no to accept that 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 we that we that the, the 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 spirit little spirit is weak. The flesh, the spirit is willing. Flesh is weak within us. We have to accept that that's we have a dual nature as humans, but we have the Holy Spirit to fall on. Mm -hmm. And when I think of self acceptance, I also think of. Jesus looked to, to scripture and that was where he learned who he was. That is where he knew and discovered that he was the Messiah. Mm. And what he spoke was the truth about himself that he learned in scripture to us. And likewise, self-acceptance. This is my beloved son and who I am well pleased. As Christians, we are beloved sons and daughters of the Most High King. That's what the Word speaks about us. And who am I not to love someone that God loves, even if it's myself? <laughs> Say that again. Who am I not to love someone whom God loves, even if it's myself? We know how to love God. We know how to love our neighbor. At the end of the day, there's nothing left over for us. 
Gotta love ourselves. Gotta love ourselves. It, 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 let's think about it this way. You've traveled on a plane before, right? Yeah. And you, the, the little speech they give you that if the plane's going down and you're yeah, flying with a child, yeah, yeah, yeah. what do they tell you to do? <laughs> Put the mask on you before you try to save that. Absolutely. It, it, and I've been asking in my own study, like, how did Jesus do what he did? And what he's revealing to me now is he got up very early in the morning and he went away with by himself to spend time with the Father. Yeah. Oh, my God, Pam, you are breaking me today. You know, Pam, I was sharing uh, this past Sunday which would be the 20th, mm -hmm. okay, the 20th, this past Sunday. That mm -hmm. When God wants to change you, he challenges your way of thinking to reveal your heart. Mm -hmm. He does. And, hey, listen, uh, I'm not perfect, and I've had my issues. And I'm telling you, over the past few months or two months specifically, God has just been changing the way, challenging the way I think about stuff. Mm hmm Right? Mm -hmm. And you're doing the same right here. You're causing me to think about things very differently, and I'm realizing that you know what? If I don't master these things you're talking about, self acceptance, okay, and managing my mental health, I will never get to that love place, which means I'll still be further away from the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We got to do this. Mm -hmm. We have to do this. And, 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 and in the time and place that we are now, it's needed more than ever. God, you heard that. Everybody's going through COVID. Everybody's in their zone somewhere. Mental health. You know what? Pam, 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 you're saying something that is even amazing. This whole, they're doing the Winter Olympics right now. Mm -hmm. And I think for those of you who remember last summer, there was an amazing, famous tennis star, Naomi Osaka. Mm -hmm. I think her name is Osaka. She's a, she's a, she's a world number one. And she said because of the mental health, she couldn't play the game. Mm -hmm. She said the mental health was too much. And you hear about athletes talking about mental health a lot now. Even this Olympic Games. Uh, Simon, S Simeon Bile. I think mm -hmm. she's the Olympic gold. Simone Bile. Mm -hmm. She even talked about mental. So she didn't compete in some of the events because the pressure was too much. She took time to breathe. Mm -hmm. and she came back and she helped them win some gold thing. Listen. We are crushing as the body of Christ with these mental things. Mm -hmm. And we have an answer. How do we think about what we're thinking about? Mm -hmm. Why are we taking the offenses off? Why? And, and we have to breathe. And to go back to your um, example of Simone Biles, if we don't take care of our mental, emotional, spiritual health, it will manifest itself physically, which is what happened to her which also I see happening with clients. Our bodies will break down. Our spirits will break down. Our emotions will break down if we don't take care of our mental health first. Yeah. Again, if we don't love ourselves, we can't love anyone else. Amen. Okay. My dear sister, keep going. All right. Um, another area is of self-care, and I think we just kind of hit at that. The two of those go together. Um, and, um, you know, self-discovery, understanding who we are, how we are made, what our talents, what our gifts and skills and ability are, in addition to what Scripture says about us, discovering who we are, that's a self that's a foundation of self-love. And I think another critical one, and this has been key in, in my develop, is the inner voice. Back to thinking about what we think about. You know, sometimes the, 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 the things that we take as the truth about us is just a lie that might have been told to us when we were a little kid. It is a lie. That is a lie. You believe it. That over time. Over time, we didn't challenge us because we don't think about what we think about. Grows. We don't, and it grows. Not only that, it becomes our own voice. And it becomes the voice of other people that may be very clearly saying, I love you, but because 
I believe I'm unworthy because I was neglected or I had trauma or somebody said, you're not worth loving. And it gets kind of conflicted in the, in the stories that God's great. We don't deserve it. Well, that's because we didn't earn it. You know, and it's like, I don't deserve to be loved. And that is just so, 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 so much a lie. You you, you have no idea how spiritual you are. You are, you are right now. I mean, when you talk about, uh, okay, based on my experiences, I'm not loved or something. And then somebody's trying to tell you, 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 you. Pam, it's, it's incredible. You know what? Whew. We are one jacked up race. <laughs> I think even animals do better than us, the image of Christ. I, don't, I wonder if animals go through all this stuff that we deal with. Sometimes I think they're closer to the kingdom than we are. <laughs> I think are. I they know think, something we don't I mean, know. They're looking at us like, man, you guys are some messed up bunch people. Hey, if they can hear and see things that we can't hear and see because they're on a different spectrum and wavelength, who? I mean, the animals get, literally the animals get it. I bet you our dogs in our houses look at us like, you guys are such emotional balls, emotional wrecks. We don't get this. And mm-hmm. the dog is looking at him like, like, I have unconditional love for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Well, think about this. Let everything that has breath yeah. praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. And, he, it, 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 and I have had call them supernatural spiritual experiences of thinking about, you know, we think about the trees and nature. I mean, they're breathing, they're taking it. I mean, there's an exchange of oxygen and I don't know the whole science of it in the moment. Animals, birds, they're all, they're breathing, living creatures. Breathe in the spirit. (sighs) Fufu the dog here is looking at us like, really? Come on, man. Why are you all depressed? Why are you always angry? Chill. Don't take offense. You're on the couch and he feels sorry for you. It's like, okay, let me go cuddle up to this emotional ball idiot guy <laughs> to, mm-hmm. to show him unconditional love because he doesn't get it. Mm-hmm. And that's God's way of telling us through his creation. Through his creation. Yes. Through his creation. Who he is. Mm-hmm. Oh, Pam, we can keep going. We can keep going. We can so definitely keep I going. I know, I know you have, you have, okay. Why, why don't you go through the five points? Okay. Just, just the bless found- us with the foundational fives or okay. the foundational six. Just tell us what they are. And then I think we have to probably do this again sometime, but let's keep, okay. let's keep going for the sake of time. The first is the area of our mental health. The area of our mental health. Yes. Okay. Um, Learning to radically accept ourselves and others. Accept ourselves and others, yes. And having clear boundaries. Clear boundaries, three. Self-care and self-discovery. Four. And inner voice, thinking Five. about what we think about. Five. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, it's, 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 it's incredible. I think, I, think, I think I have learned a lot today. I know what my takeaways are, and I'm sure that you can go far deeper into what you're sharing, and we're going to do it. Okay, I think I think we need more. Listen, Pam, I I I know the gifts of the spirit. We can flow in the gifts of the spirit. But like I say, the character of SRM is that we have some amazing mature people, but this this emotional thing bottles it up. So you have people who can see the hand of God moving, but emotionally they're still bottled up and struggling. There has to be liberation. And I think the kingdom of God is going to come here near if we practice this love thing. It is the most selfless, unselfish act of God that we can do. And we got to get it right. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for pouring out your heart like this. Because you've touched on some things that we need to continue. My pleasure. Praise God. We we, we have to. We have Mm -hmm. to. Okay. So I know there's a lot of content here. Mm -hmm. And you, 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 you you just wrecked me. Okay, so why don't you say something to the people? I'm going to shut up and let you just rant, say something to the people. Okay, feel free. So I won't interrupt you and then we'll go from there. All right, please bless the people. Hear this. You were made in the image of God. And I want you to imagine a choir of angels singing over you. Behold, 
the image of God. Oh, my God. And as you walk through your day encountering other people, I want you to imagine a choir of angels singing over them, Behold the image of God. Even those who don't yet recognize him hold the image of God. That puts it in perspective. I share that as a spiritual um, practice that a wonderful lady up in Toledo worked with me as a spiritual director okay. in challenging me to imagine myself walking through the day with a chorus of angels singing over me. And there is scripture that says God sings over yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sings over us. And if you need to, put a little posty note on your mirror that says, behold the image of God. And here we are. We don't think about that or see that. We want to take offense to these people. And God is saying, there's nothing you can do to separate me from the love of that person. We are loved beyond our imagining. Nothing. All of us. Nothing the breath, can the separate length, the us the height, from the love of God. Wow. Okay. Pam, you've wrecked me. I'm so blessed. <laughs> There's more to come. But I think I'm going to say this. If you haven't heard anything that this woman said today, then you're probably deaf. Okay? Go back and play it again. Listen, think about what you're thinking about. Please think about what it is that you're thinking about. Why do you take the offense? And love so you can get closer to the kingdom of God. Check your mentality, right? Mm -hmm. So please listen to this thing again, because I think it's a bridge to what it is that God is going to do as we study the book of John in services moving forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. But Pam, since you did such an incredible job of dissecting the word of God, okay, this is some Berean stuff here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Please go ahead and bless the people, pray for us, and then let's close out. <sighs> May the presence of the Holy Spirit mm. rest heavily upon you. Mm -hmm. May the love of the Father and the Son mm. fill you to overflowing. Mm -hmm. May you know that you are dearly loved, mm. highly valued, and worthy in the kingdom. Mm. Amen. Amen. I don't know how you second that, mm. but we just pray for, for grace. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the grace and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now. And forevermore. forevermore. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time. You're amazing. You're a child of God. Choose life. Choose amen. life. Choose life. Choose the Spirit. Amen. We love you. Amen. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You know, Pastor Alvin here. I am wrecked. I am totally wrecked because what this woman has done is challenged my thinking to reveal my heart. I would have never known that I need to think about what I'm thinking about. And I would have never thought that I voluntarily can say I don't want to take an offense. I've learned a lot during this session and we, we bless Pam for what she, she has done here. I hope you took some new goods and you're going to exercise and execute every single thing that you've learned over the past two weeks. I know you will. Keep coming back. Keep coming back. And I know that your inner man will be revived to live the fullness of what God wants you to do. We're all getting close to the kingdom together because of love. Take care. God bless you. Walk in his grace. Thanks for joining us again. Bye-bye.